Welcome to City Line. It is wonderful to be in your home. We are live every Thursday morning. We have a great hour ahead of us. Later on, we'll be talking with Michael Lang. He is here from Spaceworks, and he has some new opportunities in his life that he's going to share with us. Uh, Gerard Morris and Morris Northcutt are here from the Tacoma Concert Band to talk about the summer they had and what's coming up for the fall. And then Chris Surface and Jen York are here to talk about uh, the main stage production of a play that sometimes things go wrong but it's okay figure that out with me right now is our pet of the week Lauren who do you have that needs a forever home I have with me Kitty, a dog named Kitty. Ah! I think it kind of lends itself to a children's book series just yes. throwing it out there um, she's a wonderful wonderful dog we think around six years old our best guess but she is the most friendly dog oh. she's kind of the dog you picture when you want to welcome a pet into your family she would fit right in with anyone see she's wonderful <laughs> oh look at this and yeah she is and, and our dan is doing a great job on pet cam there Out, outstanding we would be remiss if we didn't mention we can pre-order calendars today and also, we still have reduced adoption fees. Yes, today is the last day of our Clear the Shelters adoption promotion. Uh, so today would be a great day to swing by and adopt Kitty or any of her wonderful adult friends. Um, and yes, you can pre-order our 2024 calendar on our website, uh, thehumanesociety.org. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much for being here and for bringing us Kitty. And uh, we'll see you next week. Of course, thank you. Now with me now on the couch, I have somebody that I go way back with, with many um, incarnations of our lives. But most of all, she is somebody who doesn't stop making sure that our society is good to our children. And for that, please join me in welcoming Lisa Keating. You are with the Tacoma School Board. You're a Tacoma School Board Director and also a legislative representative. Welcome back to City Line. Hi, thank you. It's, it's great to be here. It's been a while <laughs> since we had you on the comfy couch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's way past due. Okay, we're not gonna do that again. So. Let's talk about uh, what is the local, state, and national landscape for trans youth and our families, because you have a really interesting take on this. Um, yeah, I think um, I, I'm going to start with national and then bring it back locally. Um, a lot of my professional work is really at a national level and collaborating with other um, stakeholders, LGBTQ organizations, um, and also um, we have a very affirming administration um, in the White House, which makes a huge difference mm -hmm. on um, protective policies and inclusion practices. Um, and there we, um, the last several years, um, there's been um, a significant um, growth in what is now referred to as the parental rights movement. Yes. Um, and people <clears throat> on a national level, like it's really dominated a lot of our state houses. Um, and the agenda really has been to um, limit the ability for trans youth um, and LGBTQ youth um, to just exist and be kids. Um, and it's an ideology that is a manufactured problem. Mm. Um, similar to the manufactured problem that we faced here in our own county yeah. um, six, seven years ago regarding um, trans people in restrooms. Um, and so it's the same group of people that are funding it and fighting for it to um, really um, create a society that looks the way that they believe it looks, mm -hmm. not the way it actually is. Mm -hmm. um, and this work, I've been at this work 
maybe 15 years, wow. 16 years. I was going to say, was the last time I had you on the couch when we were going through the bathroom debate in our community? It probably was. Probably. That was like a big wow. blur. <laughs> it was so a really big blur. You have your finger on the pulse of what the state legislator uh, has done to support and protect trans and non-binary youth. Give us an example of that, because you're right, the former administration, that was not something that they felt they wanted to promote or needed to keep their finger on. Uh, this administration is different. So what are you seeing trickle down to the state level? Yeah, um, and I wanna say one quick thing about the current administration and President Biden, that there's a, there, when he was vice president, in President Obama's first term. Um, it was really President Biden's relationship with trans people mm -hmm. that helped move President Obama's administration into inclusivity of trans people. It was really because the Biden family had a very close personal connection with a trans person specifically, which so often, and, and within, I would say, the LGBTQ community, it really is that relationship. Yes. Once you have that human connection and the relationship and the story of someone else, then your perspective changes, your priorities change, your willingness to do things and see things differently changes. Once you have that human level um, bond with yes. someone else. And so President Biden does not actually get kind of the credit that I feel that he deserves um, in terms of really moving trans people into visible positions within the administration during the Obama, um, uh, the first Obama administration specifically. Um, and on a state level, we, Washington State um, and Tacoma, frankly, um, has had a very long history of protecting LGBTQ mm -hmm. people um, and including trans people. And what a lot of people don't know is that gender identity and sexual orientation have been protected classes in Washington State since 2006. Mm -hmm. So this is not new. Um, and I think that one of the things that when I work with legislators um, and other advocates, we think about what do we need additionally to protect? And so it's never like, there's not just a, oh, we check the box, we're done. Mm -hmm. um, and so because of the healthcare bans, sports bans, um, and bathroom bans um, for trans youth that have, and also extended to trans adults in several states. Um, because of that, there were several states in the country and Washington, our legislature was one of them, who worked to pass, um, they're either called shield laws or sanctuary laws. Okay. So they're interchangeable. Um, for us in Washington state, we have sh um, shield laws. And what they did, especially after the overturn of Roe, um, June of last mm -hmm. year, um, they incorporated um, abortion access and abortion health care and gender affirming care into similar categories that both forms of health care need to be protected and are, are a right, our human right to have access to. Um, and so um, our legislature um, passed two shield laws um, protect for one specifically for LGBTQ youth um, who are experiencing homelessness mm -hmm. um, because we also unfortunately yes. know that a lot of um, rejection, family rejection, the reason that youth end up mm -hmm. on the streets it's because or on a couch. They're kicked out. Because their families, there's, yeah, not yeah. that affirmation and um, acceptance. So. You, my dear, um, I was really torn with, do I introduce you in terms of your advocacy work first, or do I introduce you as, a, as somebody who not only has um, a view from a legislative point of view, you have your pulse on what happens in our schools, you also are a parent of a trans child. I mean, what has your experience been and how does that inform you? Um, yeah, I am a proud parent Yes. Um, of now not a child. I mean, she'll always be a child, but um, of an almost 19-year-old human being. <sighs> I know, it's crushing um, and amazing all at the yes. same time. Um, but Stella, my daughter, really informed how I saw the world. And I often say that trans people are a gift. Mm -hmm. um, and I've learned to see the world in ways that I would have never um, without knowing them and being in community and in relationship with them. Um, and they've, all, I would say that Stella really challenged me on what is authenticity? 
And how am I living an authentic life and being authentic to all of the pieces that I am? Um, So for me, um, I mean, we've as a family been at this for years and years and years. Um, We started I started using social media as a way to just Mm -hmm. tell our story because I knew that building relationship and having a connection, even if it's on a virtual platform, even if it's through an interview, it may not be face to face. By having those connections and knowing the the story of someone else mm-hmm. builds empathy. Yes, it does. That's and why so, storytelling is mm-hmm. so important. It's very powerful. Yeah. So, my gosh, I'm looking up and going, we have like less than two minutes left. How did that happen? Um, let's talk about um, Gender Cool Project in this last mm-hmm. two minutes. Tell us what yeah. it is. So the Gender Cool Project is a youth-led and youth-inspired storytelling campaign um, that started a little over five years ago. And our family is one of the original five families that helped launch, which is crazy to think that it's been that long. Um, And we've grown from, and we have our young people are called champions. And my daughter Stella has been one of the original champions. um, And now she's become an alum because she's graduated out of high school. And so now she's an alum in the program. And Really, the, the purpose is similar to the storytelling purpose of that our family started doing so many years ago. Um, by meeting young trans and non-binary people, it changes misinformed, misinformed opinions mm-hmm. by having powerful experiences. And there is a lot of really frightening um, and disturbing risks and statistics around youth that are not um, accepted and affirmed. And yes. we also know with the Gender Cool Project that we need to counter that we need an equal balance of, yes, these things happen when you mm-hmm. don't love and affirm a human being, right. regardless of who they are. Right. And look, this is what actually happens when you love and affirm a human being and look at all the things they get to be and do and experience and how do they contribute by just being themselves. Thank you. So last question, what gives you hope? Oh, young people. Yes. Yeah, kids. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's basically my why. So Absolutely. And, and what they have to say and how they see the world mm-hmm. um, and how they challenge the adults. Absolutely, they mm-hmm. do. We have just scratched the surface, so um, I want you to come back, and we're going to talk more about this since we are just right around the corner with school starting again for all of our children. So thank you so much. Lisa, you have done work that will continue on for decades, for generations to come, and I thank you for that. You're amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. When we come back, Chris and Jen from TLT will be in the house. You don't want to miss that. We'll be right back.